Finally, the tutorial on drawstring bags. These are so easy to make and I think they're really cute and perfect way to wrap up a present but also a junk journal. You can use new materials, you can use recycled materials, sheer fabrics or regular fabrics, thicker fabrics, it's totally up to you and you can easily customize it to any size. So stay tuned if you'd like to see how it's done. Hello everybody, it's Dragana from Susiba. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share something with you, a video that I've been meaning to do for so long and I just, I don't even know why, I never got around doing it. But I'm sure you'd be interested because a gift giving season is upon us and I make these drawstring bags usually for my journals. But I also make them as gift bags for other presents. Whatever the present is, it's always nice if you get it wrapped nicely. But why waste paper if you have some fabrics that you can use to make these drawstring bags? That's perfect. And that is what I want to show you how to do today. I just want to show you a few examples. Here's this one. And a tiny little journal inside. Okay. So if you're making journals for sale, it's always nice if they have a nice um, kind of bag to keep them in. And I have this one, a winter, oh no, it's not a winter, it's a butterfly journal, it's that one. It keeps the dust away, this is a huge one. And I'll show you how to make these for any present or any size journal. This one. Okay. This is totally customizable. Um, I'll show you how to do it for your journal or for any other object. It doesn't have to be a journal, it can be a bottle of wine. And we'll make a few together. And I have a few more here. Don't they look nice? Just like that. And then you can attach some flowers or some other decorations, make a little pocket, put a tag inside. You know, possibilities are endless. I will show you the basics and then it's up to you if you would like to take it further. Okay, I'll put these aside and my recent journal. <laughs> I love this one. So I want to make a bag for this journal and I haven't made one. So I've been going through my fabrics and I picked this one. Okay. I think this is meant for curtains, as you can see it is see-through and I love fabrics like that for these gift bags so that you can still see what's inside but it doesn't have to be, you can take anything, even like old jeans or some thicker fabrics, that's fine totally depending on what you want to make the bag for. If it's a present for your husband or your father or your son, obviously you're not going to pick floral fabrics, you're going to pick something that they like maybe even something like this they might uh, like that it kind of has that masculine look okay so here we go i have my journal and the way i do this is i take the fabric that i want to use and i place the journal in between and i want to make sure i have enough on both sides and I don't want it to be too tight, you know. I want it to be a little bit loose so it's easy to put inside. So something like that. So you will take, obviously, your journal and make sure you have enough on all sides. All right? So I think that's about right. And, yeah, maybe I'll just go about here. Also, you want to have enough down at the bottom. Okay. Maybe this is fine and you need to leave some for the top because we're going to fold this I don't really measure when I do this but I'll give you the measurements now so after I folded this fabric I'm going to leave about four inches about four inches okay over my over the end of this journal so four extra inches if you don't have fabric that is long enough 
you can have two pieces and join them down at the bottom. That is totally fine. Okay, I'm lucky that this fabric is big enough, so I don't have to do that. But it's totally okay if you have, for example, two pieces and you join them down at the bottom. So now here I have this label because this is a sample fabric and these labels tend to be so sticky even when you take them off they stay sticky so I'm going to just cut off this whole length here because I think I have enough and then I'll just check once more if I have enough here okay then I'm going to fold this in half. As you can see, I've cut into this, so I have to cut that off. Otherwise, I would have gone all the way here, but it doesn't really matter. And, you know, you don't have to go really, you know, exact. So I'm going to cut that. Alright, let's just test it. Yeah, it's almost eight. And okay, that should be alright. Now here I have like raw edge and this edge here is Done on the serger and I don't want it because if it was the same on both I would have left it otherwise I'm not keeping it so now I have to figure out what the right side okay I think this is the right side on the inside which is perfect so I'm going to do this and don't worry if you didn't cut it really straight because you're gonna fix it later on we've added four inches didn't we extra which means I'm going to place this roughly at three inches okay and I'm going to do the same here three inches back okay so now I have to go take it to the sewing machine and just do a straight stitch there all the way to the bottom and a straight stitch here Okay, so let's go over to the sewing machine. I'm using black thread on white simply because I want you to see clearer. But obviously I probably wouldn't go black on white. I'd use white thread on white or black on black. But I think it's going to be easier for you to see if I do it like this. And I'm just going to do straight stitch, 3 millimeter length and I'm gonna give myself enough room so I will align the foot with the edge of the fabric and I'll put the needle all the way here. I just have this regular foot. So when you start you go forward then back then back to make sure it doesn't come undone and then you just go straight. get to the end you go back and forward a couple of times again to make sure it doesn't come undone and then you do the same here so I'll just put that on that side Once you're happy with the position of the needle, you take that out. And then you go. So 
So this is what we have now. What I like to do is take my pinking shears. These are really blunt, so I'm using these scalloped ones, which is the same thing. And I'll just go like this. This is to stop the fabric from fraying. And I also think it looks kind of cute. So just go like that. It will make it look nice and neat. Now when I come here, I go closer to the edge. Make it a little bit wider. Okay. So I'll go all the way to the edge. And then I just go a little bit closer to the stitches. If you have a serger, you may choose to do this whole fabric before stitching. Before stitching, because with the serger you, you would have to stop here and then you still have that part undone sort of thing. But I find that this is enough. It's just a gift bag. It doesn't have to be too elaborate. So what I do now uh, is I do the same with the top bit here. I'll just do this. to stop it from fraying okay. and you may want to just do that just a corner it will just sit nicely okay. now that we've done that we have to do this part and you may choose to use your hot iron for this or just do that you fold that piece towards one side I'll just put a pin and one more here okay and then once you do that you press with your finger I'll just cut out this thread Okay, you press with your finger there and then here. Just do like that. If you do a lot of these at once, it would be wise to actually do each step with a lot of these and then you would have your iron ready and then when you get to this you just use your iron. Now here also press this make sure it stays open like that so i'll just do that a little bit okay all right so this is what we have okay now we need to go to the sewing machine and do like a straight stitch here and then here because we want that edge to be nice and you do the same with this side, exactly the same. So you do it here and then you do it there. All right, so let's go to the sewing machine again. Okay, so I'll start from this end. I'm going to go somewhere in the middle of that. Okay, somewhere here. I'm going to take this out I'm going to hold this thread just to help it move sometimes with thinner fabrics when you start it just falls through inside you can also start on a piece of paper and then continue here it would work all right Just there. Like that. 
Now you lift up the foot, twist. Take this one out and then you go a little bit on the corner. better if I used white thread but as I said I wanted to make sure you see properly All right so I'm gonna do the same on this side And that this is what we have so far we'll have to go to the sewing machine one more time but before we do that now we want to do the top and now you can experiment here a little bit and, and see if you want that longer if you want it shorter but I generally like to go just below that there that thread is so just what about a quarter of an inch or so if you do all the way here then this end is going to show when it's not good so you have to go a little bit further down perhaps all the way there like that okay and then you just put a pin and the same on this side and when you do this make sure these top bits meet and then you, that you're turning this towards the inside so that you have nice finish on that side. Right. Trust me, I've done it the wrong way so many times. <laughs> but once you do a, a few, you get used to it. So I'm going to fold it here. And then I'm going to compare to see if they're the same. They're not completely the same. It doesn't really matter but you know want to do it at least close no one's gonna take mirroring tool and check it at least i hope so okay i guess they meet here again you may choose to use your hot iron and iron that to make sure it's not moving I just, I never have time for that. Just go and do this. As long as it's straight, just put a few pins and that should keep it in place. And then turn it to this side. I obviously didn't cut it straight there, but it doesn't really matter because it's not going to be visible. All right. So now again, we have to go to the sewing machine and then we have to stitch from here all the way there, there, there and there. Okay. If your sewing machine has this ability, you may take this part, put it aside. It's just easier to wrap this around, get a nice uh, straight stitch. If it doesn't, you can still do it. It's not a big deal. And you may choose to work from either side. I'm going to work from this side because the pins are here. Otherwise, it would be difficult to, to take the pins out. So I'm going to... Go here, move the pins so I don't break my needle. My needle is in the middle position, 
I'm still using the same three millimeter stitch and I won't even worry about going back and forward because when I do the full circle I will secure the thread. try to meet them at the same kind of position you don't want to finish up here or there you just want to meet the beginning with the end so that is it now you may choose to you may choose to finish this i normally just do that okay i don't go and do another stitch but sometimes if you leave this a little bit bigger than what we have here you would want to do another straight stitch and then that will be almost like a little ruffle at the top let's just do it anyway with this one so now i'm going to put the needle all the way here so that i have at least that much to put the ribbon in or a string and then i'll have that piece there like a ruffle it will look like a ruffle We're done with sewing. Okay, so that is it. That part is done. And then you just take it inside out. Push the corners. So to complete the project, you need some either string, some lace or some ribbon that you have to put through here, through this part. And I think I'm going to go with this one because I don't have any that's black. And this is how I work out how much I need. Because it has to go around. You need to have at least enough to go around when you open it. And you need to have enough here to put a little bead or something and make a knot. So it's always better if you have a little bit more. Let's see if I have enough here for two. I do so you basically need this twice okay if you want to have a drawstring bag so you cut, I'm going to cut it here so I have this much twice okay just want to make sure see this properly okay we'll have to go through it twice I'm going to use this okay so I'll just put it through here. Oops. I'm going to start from one side. So I'm going in. Sometimes here you might end up having trouble but you just wiggle wiggle it until you get on the right path <laughs> okay. Hold this here. All right, so that's one side done. 
Now you do the other side. Again, you do the same thing, but you start from this end because you need to have this on that side as well. So we'll start here. Now the second time around, you, you know, sometimes it might get a bit tricky if it catches onto these. The first ribbon, but it's it's doable. Okay. Then here. Sometimes if you want to get this even, you just go like that. Hold all four ends and just do that and then you want to do it. Okay, so now you have it nice and straight. If you have some beads, now it's the time to put them. If you don't, you can just make a knot here. Okay, but I find it's better if you have some sort of bead, it will stop this from going inside. Okay, so let's find some. So since we have a black and white theme here, I think I should get some beads that are black and white. I found uh, these paper paper beads and they're kind of gray color, not really black or white. And I think they would work well because the opening here is wide enough for the ribbon. I realized I can't really use regular beads with the ribbon. It's just too hard to pull through. I'm using like this really fine 0 0.75 millimeter crochet hook. You put that on your crochet hook and just pick these two and I just pull that. Okay. Make sure it's it's not really all the way like that, so you just leave it a little bit. Okay. You leave it some space, basically, and you make a knot. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And then you can cut this. And you can also use your lighter just to melt the edge so it doesn't come undone. Just carefully. Don't start the fire, please. <laughs> okay, again, you put that on your crochet hook. Take those two. And you pull through. Make a knot. Close enough. Now do that. And it's done. It's done. And now it's the fun part. If you like, you can have it just like that especially if your fabric is really elaborate in terms of design. If it's plain or simple, you may choose to add something here, either a slow stitch or some sort of you know, a flower or a ribbon or totally up to you. You can lose something. I just want to test it to see if that's going to look all right. I think it fits all right. Let's try. Very nice. 
Okay, so should I put something here? Even this one. So I can just glue this onto there. Or I have some of these. Oh, I've done this ages ago. I think these would look nice like that. Like glued together. I could just probably use hot glue. Now let's make one that is slightly different size. I have this old shirt. It used to belong to my husband. And I obviously took it apart a while ago. And I think it would be really cool if I make one of these bags that has a pocket like this. Wouldn't that be fun? So I'll have to straighten here. Obviously. smaller bag I'll cut off this bit because this has a slight curve all right and basically it's the same thing you turn it like that you leave enough here you may choose not to go with four inches because here we have this pocket and if we want to keep the pocket we don't want to close it, we want it to stay open, so this would have to be like that, right? Or even less. So you adjust, and then that means we will go only up to here. Let's just measure that. That's two and a half inches. So you just customize this to whatever You need okay so we said two and a half for this one and then here two and a half I have this nice fabric really festive red and but we make a wine bottle first. I'll fold the fabric this way. Okay. I think it looks all right. There is a bit of a hole here, so I'll move that up. And I want to have enough there. And I want to have enough to fold and then do the the bow thing so i'm gonna go and use the whole fabric and i could probably go up to there by the time we take the sewing yeah i'll just i'll go like this Cut off my bit. And this fabric frays a lot. This but that's alright. Let's see how I cut it. Alright, this part here I can trim. Let's turn it inside out. Again, 
we measure we do that and you want this flap to be a little bit bigger like that that means we will have to go that day piece we leave ten and a half inches ten and a half inches on this side too so as you can see it's the same principle it's just that dimensions are different depending on what you're making the bag for if you want to make a big bag for something for a blanket for for example you you make like a quilt or something and you want to put it in a nice bag you will have to make this a lot bigger Obviously, if you're making it for the wine bottle, you just have to adjust uh, the measurements and, and so on. So I'm just going to go and do this quickly on my sewing machine and then I'll show you what they look like. Okay, finish those two. I think this one turned out really cute. I might even get uh, some small present for my husband and I can even put a, a gift tag here in the pocket and I know he loved this shirt he probably forgot about it because I've had it in my stash for a while so yeah maybe I get him some chocolate or some socks or something <laughs> and put a gift tag there I think that's really a nice way to recycle old t-shirts jeans perhaps and um, your blouses and the, the pocket was already there I didn't have to fuss about it and it looks really uh, presentable now this one the wine uh, bottle this gave me a little bit of trouble because this fabric is really difficult to work with but i managed now i just want to show you something else um, let's just test it first i think it looks kind of cute like that but you see these there is a way that you can uh, make that a little bit more square down the bottom and the same goes for these as well like if you have a th thicker journal or something that is um, kind of not flat like a book you can always do this you find these corners and then you do like a straight stitch here and here like that and then it turns into a little like a a bit different shape and I'll just do it on this example because that's basically it is a circle but it's a square that's what I mean it fits into a square rather than the flat uh, shape so I would I would do it like this I would take it apart and align these Okay, now I have to check how big I want this. See, I've made that into a square. Now I can see that perhaps I can do a straight stitch here and straight stitch there. So, I just put a in. and what is it that's about well, one and a quarter inches and I'll do the same here okay, I hope you can see so you just go straight here like that so that you put that corner and the same on this side I'll just do that quickly and I'll be back. Okay, so that's what that looks like now. You have these. So you have an option of cutting those off or just, you know, fold them inside and it will make the bottom a little bit stronger. So it's totally up to you. I'd probably leave it. Maybe use iron, hot iron to kind of keep it in place. See what I mean? So now it's not as flat it's more rounded and then when we put the bottle inside it 
kind of fits nicer. Okay, and here. I left these, as you can see, I left these, forgot to mention that. You know how on the other ones I don't leave as much. I think I left a little bit more here because this is kind of narrow and I wanted to have enough to do this. Okay, so here it is. It's just an ordinary bottle, but <laughs> you know, it can be a nice bottle of wine. And then you can have that up. You can also choose to close these, but I, I don't. I just let them like that. <laughs> I think it's cute. So here we go. Drawstring gift bags in different sizes. Originally, I used to make these just for my journals, but since then I've been making them for all sorts of presents. I like them especially when they're from recycled materials. If you happen to have some old curtains, perhaps some old tablecloths, and some lacy materials and this one is just i love this one uh, yeah recycled uh, shirt okay i hope you find this tutorial useful and i hope you're gonna give it a go if i have time i'm gonna make some of these and put them in my etsy but i can't promise i'm very busy <laughs> anyway thank you so much for watching and i hope i see you soon in my next video bye for now